Good morning, everyone. My name's Poppy, and I'm delighted to welcome you today. It's great to have so many of you connecting with us on our live stream. We love all the comments you post, so please keep them coming. And don't forget to click the share button. And now to our worship. History. Death is beaten, you have rescued me. Sing it out, Jesus is alive. The empty cross, the empty grave. Life eternal, you have won the day. Shout it out, Jesus is alive. He's alive. Jesus is alive, he's alive. Till on that cross as Jesus 
Jesus died, the wrath of God was satisfied, for every sin on him was laid, here in the death of Christ I live. ground his body lay light of the world by darkness slain then bursting forth to glorious day up from the grave he rose again and as he stands in victory since curse has lost its grip on me the precious blood of Christ. No guilt in life, no fear in death, this is the power of Christ in me. From life's first cry to final breath, Jesus commands my destiny. No power of hell or scheme of man can ever block me from his hand till he returns or calls me home. Here in the power of Christ I'll stand. As lockdown eases, you may be watching this stream with up to six people outside or with another household indoors. We'd love to hear and see photos of how you are beginning to reconnect. Please email them to Mark at the email address on your screen now. Two weeks ago, we celebrated our interns as they came to the end of their year on form. Here's Claire to share a little bit more about this. Form is a life-changing 10-month discipleship adventure. We love hosting Form here in Ipswich and over the last few years have seen a number of Formies come through uh, and grow deep roots into God, uh, discover that they are a missionary in wherever God places them, but also come out the other side with a renewed passion and vision for what the uh, future holds um, and the adventures God has got for them. You will have seen a couple of weeks ago that we had our final uh, form celebration. Do go back and watch it if you didn't and catch up with some of the testimonies from the seven interns we've had with us this year. The good news is that recruitment is open uh, for our form year that will start mid-September. We're really excited about welcoming new interns to join us. So if you're 18 to 35 and you're not really sure uh, what September looks like for you, I would love to explore that with you. Perhaps you were thinking of going to uni, but now you're not. You were taking a gap year, now you're not. Perhaps you've come to a point with your job where you're thinking, OK, God, what is next? Uh, what does that look like? Or perhaps for one reason or another, um, you don't have much planned for September. I would love to explore whether form would work for you. And it's very basic. It works um, with having a teaching day, um, which is on a Monday, and then also another day a week or the equivalent of another day a week serving within our church family. You're part of the leadership team, so you get to know all of the team really, really well. And you get to be part of imitating uh, those that are leading, getting to know them, getting to see how they work and learning how to grow as a leader in an area of our church life. As I've said, it's really easy to find out more. You can either head to our church website, which is burlington.church forward slash interns, 
or you can get hold of me, Claire, at burlington.church and I would love to have a conversation with you about whether this is something that God has got planned for you for the coming year. Get in touch, forms an adventure and I'd love to you to be part of it. Lockdown has affected so many in so many ways. Earlier this month, Simon and Kerry had the privilege of speaking with Nancy from one of our mission partners, Perspectives, to see how lockdown has affected their work and ask what we can be praying for them in the coming months. So I just want Um, to ask you really how it's been with Perspectives in lockdown. It's an unusual season. Um, Yeah, it's it's been... um, I'm, I'm, I'm always amazed, actually, at how receptive the hospital is now, um, given where the, you know, the starting place was. And um, when lockdown first started, I did go in um, for a bit, but it soon became apparent that it wasn't the best way to, to move forward in terms of safety uh, um, and obviously, you know, with restrictions. So um, we've continued really via phone support um, what the nurses have done and actually it's been because usually it was only on a a Monday but because of Covid they have been phoning me throughout the week Um, so what happens is if they get somebody in during the week who has some kind of issue um, they're phoning me and they're saying can you contact this person or they're giving the person the perspectives number um, and then that person is ringing us so we have continued in some way throughout COVID. And the other thing that we've had is that we've had other agencies phone us. So agencies outside of the hospital, either because the hospital has got in touch with them or because they've found us on the web um, because they've been looking. Um, And these are people like the Norfolk and Suffolk um, Foundation that deal with mental health. So I think what's um, come to the head is a lot of people, because they've had time at home and time to think, things have come to a head for them. So they've been searching. And so people have been contacting us via that route as well, um, which is all good stuff. You know, we've been able to say we can't see you at the moment, but we will put your name down. And I think just giving people that light at the end of the tunnel uh, has been good. Fantastic. It's great to hear all that and to kind of hear the growth and, you know, the way forward. What what can we pray for you in that? Um, I think that... um, you know, we could expand much further um, because of the work we're doing at the Ipswich Hospital. Um, I don't know if you're aware, but Ipswich and Colchester have amalgamated as hospitals, so they come under one roof. And the Colchester midwives are very upset that they don't have a perspectives in Colchester. And of course, we, we support Bury St Edmunds as well. And there's no one there. Um, and so really, um, in order to expand, we need people. We need counsellors to come forward to work with perspectives. Now, we don't offer a wage. Um, everybody that works at Perspectives is a volunteer, um, but we do pay for their supervision. So what we could pray for, um, please, is for, for people to come forward to work um, at Perspectives. At the moment, we have three counsellors um, and a fourth one is on sabbatical and hopefully she'll come back in in September that's the end of her sabbatical um, but if we want to expand and to to kind of support other people <clears throat> excuse me we do need um, people to come forward as counsellors or to, who are willing to be trained you know we would support people with their training um, it's quite a long training but it you know it, it is really worthwhile Fantastic. Great. Well, well, we'll pray for those things in just a minute, but um, uh, people will be keen to know how, how you're both doing and keen to hear how your uh, embarking into training uh, with the Church of England is going. So just give us a, a quick update before we pray. Um, I was meant to be received into the Church of England um, on the 3rd of May, but obviously that didn't happen. Um, but I am going to be received into the Church of England on the 16th of August. Um, and then that means that I can start my training proper in September. Um, so Donald and I have, you know, been sort of finding our way. It's a small congregation, um, but it is growing, which is really, really um, encouraging. Um, Donald has also um, become church warden. Um, so he's taken on a new role there as well. And, um, you know, we're really getting into the spirit of that family, of that, that community. That's and of course, we miss, we miss everybody at Burlington. We really do. But we've been able to catch up because we've been coming in on your Zoom um, church services. You're very so. welcome. 
You're very, very welcome. And, uh, and we miss you too, but excited to hear of, uh, of all that's going on as you begin your training and, uh, and how you and Donald are, are fitting in there as well. So that's uh, really, really great to hear all of, all of that. Let's, uh, let's pray together for a moment, shall we? As we, uh, uh, as we reflect on what you've uh, um, been sharing with us. Father, we thank you so much for Nancy and for Donald and for their hearts to serve you and to respond to your call. We thank you for the way that actually perspectives just keeps flourishing in a season where it could have been easy for it to not grow. There's been growth. And we're asking, Lord, that you'll just send the right people to them, people that want to come and invest and train mm -hmm. and be part of that uh, center and all that they're doing that they can have this growth into the future amen amen and we pray that you would be with uh, nancy and donald in this new season of uh, stretch and faith and adventure and training as they've uh, stepped out in response to what you've laid on their hearts may they know your provision in in every way and uh, uh, and in august as uh, nancy uh, uh enters the Church of England and begins her training in the autumn, Lord, we pray that that sense of call and equipping would, would grow deeper and stronger. And for the church at All Hallows, that you would bless them beyond measure. In Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Thank you, Simon, Kerry and Nancy. I'm sure that you'll all join me in praying for both Perspectives and Nancy and Donald as they've followed God's call to this next season of ministry and training. Nikki will now read to us from God's Word, and then Simon will lead our final talk in the Encounter series. After six days, Jesus took with him Peter, James and John, the brother of James, and led them up a high mountain by themselves. There he was transfigured before them. His face shone like the sun, and his clothes became as white as the light. Just then there appeared before them Moses and Elijah, talking with Jesus. Peter said to Jesus, Lord, it is good for us to be here. If you wish, I will put up three shelters, one for you, one for Moses, and one for Elijah. While he was still speaking, a bright cloud covered them, and a voice from the cloud said, This is my son, whom I love. With him I am well pleased. Listen to him. When the disciples heard this, they fell face down to the ground, terrified. But Jesus came and touched them. Get up, he said, don't be afraid. When they looked up, they saw no one except Jesus. As they were coming down the mountain, Jesus instructed them, Don't tell anybody what you have seen until the Son of Man has been raised from the dead. The disciples asked him, Why then did the teachers of the law say that Elijah must come first? Jesus replied, To be sure, Elijah comes and will restore all things. But I tell you, Elijah has already come, and they did not recognise him but have done to him everything they wished. In the same way, the Son of Man is going to suffer at their hands. Then the disciples understood that he was talking to them about John the Baptist. We're coming then to the final episode in our Encounter series, where we've been looking at moments in the life of Jesus where people encountered him, seeing what we can learn from that encounter, and seeking to enter into the experience ourselves that we might encounter Jesus in the same way. I hope you'll agree that it's been a great journey encountering Jesus through these different stories. For our final encounter, I want to look at a moment in the life of Jesus that is different from most of the others. Obviously and rightly, we think about Jesus the man. It's a miracle that God became man, that God should so identify with us. But we can sometimes, I think, in that lose sight of the fact that Jesus is none other than the eternal God, the eternal Son of God himself. As John put it at the beginning of his story about Jesus, in the beginning was the Word, that's Jesus, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. And so the reading we had some moments ago pulls back the veil a little bit to remind us that Jesus isn't just the man, which of course he is, but he is also God 
himself, the cosmic Jesus, the, the Jesus who is bigger and beyond everything. And I want us to glimpse that Jesus this morning, who is all powerful, who is all able and comes to be with us in our homes and wherever we are just now. And it struck me reading the story again of the transfiguration when Jesus went up the mountain with Peter, James and John and he was transfigured before them. They had this glimpse that Jesus is so much bigger, so much beyond anything that they had ever thought or imagined. That it was getting near to the cross. That as they were about to experience the trauma of the cross, the grace of God gave them this great glimpse of who Jesus was. It reminded me of something that happened towards the end of the Bible. One of the disciples, John, uh, at a time of persecution, found himself locked away. <laughs> Strange, these themes keep reappearing, don't they? Locked away on an island where he was held in confinement. And there again, the grace of God gave John a vision of Jesus, not just the man, but Jesus in all his heavenly glory. What I'd love you to do is to grab your Bible, get your phone or your tablet, whatever it is uh, uh, that you have, get it open and look with me to the book of Revelation. It's the last book in the Bible and I just want to read some verses to you to help us get a glimpse of this cosmic Christ, of Jesus who always was, who always will be, Jesus who's the beginning and the end. So Revelation chapter 1 and verse 9, I, John, your brother and companion in the suffering and kingdom and patient endurance that are ours in Jesus, was on the island of Patmos because of the word of God and the testimony of of Jesus. He was locked away. He was suffering a lockdown. And it says that on the Lord's day I was in the spirit and I heard behind me a loud voice like a trumpet. Verse 12. I turned around to see the voice that was speaking to me. And when I turned, I saw seven, seven the number of heaven, golden lampstands. And among the lampstands was someone like a son of man, Jesus, dressed in a robe, reaching down to his feet and with a gold sash around his chest. The hair on his head was white like wool, as white as snow, and his eyes were like blazing fire. His feet were like burnished, uh, bronze glowing in a furnace, and his voice was like the sound of rushing waters. In his right hand he held seven stars, and coming out of his mouth was a sharp double-edged sword. His face was like the sun shining in all its brilliance. There in that moment, John has a vision of the glory of Jesus. And it says, verse 17, when I saw him, not surprisingly, I fell at his feet as though dead. Then he placed his right hand on me and said, do not be afraid. I am the first and the last. I am the living one. I was dead, but now look, I am alive forever and ever and I hold the keys of death and Hades. The grace of God gave John a glimpse of Jesus in all his glory. The grace of God gave Peter, James and John a glimpse of Jesus in all his glory as they anticipated the enduring of the cross and that sense of failure and abandonment and disappointment that they were to face. And that also got me thinking of the way in the Old Testament God also did the same thing. I'm going to read in a few moments from Isaiah chapter 40. Maybe you might begin to turn to it even as I'm speaking. And the people in Isaiah chapter 40 also felt trapped. They were in Babylon and everywhere you looked in Babylon there were these huge idols to the Babylonian gods. And because they were trapped in Babylon 
It was as if the Babylonian gods, small g, were more powerful than their god, otherwise they wouldn't be trapped there, otherwise they wouldn't have been overrun, otherwise their kingdom wouldn't be laying in ruins. And so every day they would see these huge idols of the Babylonian gods and they'd lost sight of how powerful God himself really is. And so the grace of God gives to them a vision of who he, of who Jesus, if you like, really is. Turn with me to Isaiah chapter 40 and we get a glimpse of who Jesus is. Notice in verse 9, the prophet is encouraging the people that this is your God. This is what God looks like. And maybe we think that God seems small at the moment. There are these great powers, the power of the coronavirus, the, the power of the economy, the anxiety over all that's going on in the world. And, and where is God? He seems too small. May we have a fresh vision by the grace of God of the glory of Jesus, of who he really is. This, it says in verse 9, is your God. Look at verse 6, though. A voice says, cry out, all men are like grass. That is, the Babylonians and their armies and rulers, and all their glory is like the flowers of the field. In other words, God is the Lord over human rulers. With one breath, they are gone. People, situations and moments that seem so powerful are gone in a moment with the breath of God, with the breath of Jesus. Look with me at verse 12. He is the one who measured the waters in the hollow of his hand, or with the breadth of his hand marked off the heavens. In other words, he's the Lord of creation. He holds creation in his hands, just like we would balance something on an old-fashioned weighing scales. Verses 13 and 14, he's the Lord of history. Who has understood the mind of the Lord or instructed him as his counsellor? Verse 15, he's the Lord of the nations. Surely the nations are like a drop in a bucket, clinging to the edge of a, a bucket. But God is so much greater. Verse 16, he's the Lord of all religions. Lebanon was full of trees and wood for fires and altars, but all that wood would never be enough, and so on. We could go for, uh, forward into Isaiah chapter 40, the remaining verses about it being Lord of all his rivals and competitors, being Lord of the universe, verse 22, being Lord of even the cosmic or the astral powers, verse 26. And then this great summary verse, Isaiah 40, verse 25, to whom will you compare me, or who is my equal, says the Holy One. In that difficult moment, when worldly powers seem so great and so powerful, God in his love and grace gave them a vision of who he really is. May we today know the grace of God in our lives as he gives us afresh a vision of who he is. Those early disciples said that we have seen his grace and truth and beheld his glory. That's our prayer as we come to the end of this Encounter Jesus series, that we would encounter Jesus the man, that we would enter into the stories of the Gospels, but that we would remember that he is the beginning and the end, the Alpha and the Omega, that he is bigger and beyond, more transcendent than we might ever imagine. The Jesus in whom we put our trust is the one who is above and beyond all things. And so I think perhaps of no better way at the end of this series than to leave you with some words from uh, the book of Hebrews. Hebrews chapter 1, and it's a, a reminder of who Jesus really is. In the past, God spoke to our ancestors through the prophets at many times and in various ways. But in these last days, he's spoken to us by his son, whom he appointed heir of all things and through whom also he made 
the universe. He was there at the beginning. He made the universe. The sun is the radiance of God's glory and the exact representation of his being, sustaining all things by his powerful word. After he had provided purification for sins, he sat down at the right hand of the majesty in heaven. So he became as much superior to the angels as the name he has inherited is superior to theirs. This is the Jesus that we know and love. This is the Jesus who invites us each day to meet him, to know him, to encounter him. This is the Jesus that's with you right now, wherever you are. A verse from the Gospel of John, chapter 14. Peace I leave with you, my peace I give to you. I do not give to you as the world gives. Do not let your hearts be troubled, and do not let them be afraid. And so we pray for peace. Father, we ask for peace among the races of the world. Father, give us a better understanding of one another and show us ways to build unity between ourselves. May our hearts be changed. Remove all prejudice towards those who are different from us. Within our community, Lord, we ask for those struggling with their mental health, for young people and the uncertainty of the future, whether they should go to university or college, what their job prospects are for the future, we pray for those struggling with the insecurity of employment. Father, you understand there were days when you did not know where you would lay your head. Thank you, Father, that you are present and you are with us. Help our focus, Lord, to be upon you. Lord, we pray for Ipswich Borough Council and Suffolk County Council. We pray for wisdom for those planning for our locality, for our town, and we ask, Lord, you would guide them and help them for businesses that are reopening, for plans for the future. We finally pray for those struggling with loneliness, missing one another, the lack of human touch. Father, we ask that you would draw close to us. You promise that as we draw close to you, you will draw close to us. We pray for those struggling where tempers are fraying at home and the frustrations of working environments and caring for children. Lord, we thank you that you are the God of peace. And we trust you, Lord, that you will guide us each day as it comes, Lord. And so we say the grace together. May the, May the grace, grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, Christ and, the and the love of love God, of God and, and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit, Spirit be, be with us all evermore. Amen. Amen. This concludes our time together. Just a reminder that if you usually bring your offering to church each Sunday, you can now give online and the link is on the screen. Why not begin to think about who you might like to invite to watch the live stream with you next week? Remember, six can join in your garden or a local park and two households can join together indoors. Let's start reaching out as Burlington reconnects. Remember, all the latest information about our online gatherings can be found online. The link is on your screen now. It's been so wonderful to share with you all today. Thank you so much for being with us. God bless you. Goodbye.
You would 